Novavax seeking approval for local use of its COVID-19 jab. The protein-based shot has shown promising results in overseas trials. And for a closer look on this, we're joined by Professor Ui Eng Yong. He is with the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at Duke NUS Medical School. Professor, um, Apart from the notable exception of China, most countries are finding their way of living with COVID-19. Oh, describe for us the significance of this uh, new uh, vaccine in the context of living with the virus. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, obviously, the issue that one of the issues that the world is facing is there's just not enough vaccines to vaccinate uh, to get everyone protected against COVID-19. Um, and the way vaccines work is that um, as the more people we can get that's immune to COVID-19, the better Singapore itself would be, right? So it's not just protecting Singapore, Singapore and Singapore Singaporeans from, from uh, uh, acquiring COVID-19. If we can protect everyone else, then when we open our borders, then more and more people travel. We don't have to worry about, you know, the uh, outbreaks happening because of uh, importation of viruses. Uh, Professor, uh, it's not just the number of uh, doses we have of vaccines that matter. In all these months, we've seen in different countries worrying about, for example, vaccines waning effects, vaccines side effects. Uh, the signs so far of uh, reduced side effects that could make Novavax particularly attractive. Uh, the other thing, though, is should we be worried about how long it will, be, uh, it will stay efficacious before immunity starts to wane? Yeah, I, I don't think we will know the answer about how long immunity lasts, right? Because it's one of those things where things, you know, the the situation is fluid. We're going to have to deal with uh, protecting our population and and gather the data at the same time. I don't think we can. We, the clinical trials have only been uh, conducted o over a relatively short period, uh, and so uh, there's some information that we will still need to learn as we as we uh, uh, vaccinate our population with this new vaccine. I think they're having more and more vaccines allow our population to at least make a choice. So for instance, there are some people who you know, uh, think that uh, mRNA vaccine, despite the fact that you know, billions of people have now uh, received this vaccine and that we know it to be very safe, uh, some people still want to have uh, you know, a choice and take other forms of vaccine. I think the Novavax vaccine based on a phase three trial data uh, looks pretty good as well. It's not as good, perhaps, as the mRNA vaccine, but it's it's good enough and certainly better than than inactivated virus vaccine. So I think the more choice we have, hopefully, the remaining um, uh, few who are not vaccinated will will get them uh, will get themselves vac vaccinated. And if all of us can be vaccinated, then I think Singapore will be in a great shape to move forward. Oh, uh, Professor, we. Uh if we look at the Singapore situation, as you've pointed out, we have right now, we have the Pfizer and Moderna. These are mRNA technology-based vaccines. We have Sinovac. Uh, that's an inactivated virus technology that we use. Now, uh, this new uh, protein-based vaccine, um, as you say, it's, uh, we are going to be finding out more as we go along. But where do these vaccines sit amongst other shots that are commonly used here in Singapore? So the, the mRNA vaccines have got the advantage of producing both antibodies as well as the killer T cells. Now, you think of it like, you know, your military going to fight a war. Um, you would send in your Air Force, your Navy and, and your Army, right, so that you, you, you have the best chance of, you know, winning the war and, and then ending it uh, as quickly as possible. Um, with, with all the other forms of vaccine where the protein is already made, the virus or the protein, in the case of Novavax, is the protein, is already made in the factory and then is put inside the body. The body doesn't actually make the protein. And so they don't make as many killer T cells as would an mRNA vaccine or an adenoviral vector vaccine where the, the spike protein is made inside the body because that's how the, the killer T cells sees the spike, right? It sees it in the course of it being made. Um, so, so Novavax and inactivated vac viral vaccines and all that will produce antibodies, but they don't produce a whole lot in the way of killer T cells in the way that the mRNA vaccines do. Uh, do. And we now know that the killer T cells play a very important role uh, in protection against COVID-19. Uh, so ideally, if you have a chance, a choice of, of uh, you know, the vaccines, then my advice would be 
you know, to pick those vaccines that will give you both antibody and a good dose of killer T cells so that you stand the best chance of, of defending yourselves against uh, uh, SARS coronavirus 2 infection and COVID-19. Uh, uh, Professor, by outlining how these different types of uh, vaccines work, uh, you can show how they can be more or less efficacious. Uh, one thing we need to look forward to as well is uh, coronavirus variants. We had, saw the Delta variant essentially changing how the whole world had to deal with COVID-19. Uh, some results that uh, we mentioned earlier from a UK trial showing that uh, Novavax might be promising against uh, the original COVID-19 strain and 86% against variants. What's your take on this? I think the UK, the trial, the phase three trial when it was done uh, in the UK, most of the viruses that were circulating circulating at that time were, were the alphas, right? Um, so it's not quite Delta just yet. Um, I suspect, though, that, you know, the, the vaccine will still be efficacious against Delta. One of the reasons why people worry about this loss of um, uh, potency of a vaccine in defending against Delta is because a very specific class of antibodies called the neutralizing antibodies. They don't work so well against Delta. But antibodies, besides neutralizing the virus, in other words, stop the virus from getting into our cells, they also defend our, our cells against the virus in many other ways. Right? Now, the issue with those other ways is that it's much harder to measure in the lab. So everyone then gravitates towards measuring neutralizing antibodies. And when you only look at one part of the immune response, then you start to worry that you know, Delta is, is going to break through, it's going to cause disease. If you, think, if you look at the immune system as a whole, then actually the, the vaccines work quite, it actually works very well against Delta. There's not a whole lot of difference between you know, the efficacy against the original Wuhan strain and against Delta. Uh, so so I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think part of this is that, you know, the, um, the, the world is just seeing one part of how our immune system works. Our immune system is actually very sophisticated. It's like looking at the SAF and say, oh, I only worry about the commandos. I don't care about any other parts of SAF. That's not correct because it is an important part of the SAF, but it is not the SAF. And, and we can defend ourselves in many other ways. Uh, thanks for providing a much bigger picture. Professor Ui Eng Yong with Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at Duke NUS Medical School.